Hey everyone, welcome to Excel Level Up. Today we are going to look at the divide by zero or div slash zero error message and more importantly ways to avoid it. Let's jump in. You may recall from your math classes that you can never divide a number by zero and Excel is no different. When you attempt to do this, Excel will produce an error. Now, while this is 100% mathematically correct, it can look really bad on a report like I'm going to show here. The divide by zero error messages in the third column is accurate, but you would never want to hand a report like this to your boss. So really, there are two ways that you can manage this. One, when the error message occurs, you can actually change it into something else, or you can look for ways to identify the error in advance with some logic and then perform another function. So let's jump right into Excel and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, let's look at an example now. In the examples I'm going to show, I'm always, always gonna be dividing four by two or four by zero, but let's first take a look at how the error message gets created when you're trying to divide by zero. So let's first divide this four by two and it should work like we expect and the, the result is two. But now let's do four by zero and we're going to get the divide by zero or div slash zero error message that we're trying to get out of. So let's first try to deal with this one with the if error message. And if error right here is actually very simple. You're going to embed your formula within if error and then say what to do if an error is displayed. So that's what we'll build right here. We'll do an equal sign, if error, do an open parentheses, and this is where we'll actually do the the four divided by C3, and then we'll say, what do we want to do when there's an error? And let's say in this case here, I want to do a zero, just divide by zero, put a zero there. So right away, this case, the error did not occur. Then we can go ahead and copy it down and we'll see instead of the error message, it'll put a zero here. So if error can prevent the error from coming up. Now, a major limitation of if error is that it will actually do this for any error message whatsoever. So if you're very clear about your error handling, you know this is the only thing that's going to happen if error will work for you, but if different error message are po is popping up, you won't know that and it will always put a zero there. So while if error is a powerful tool, it does have its limitations. Now let's take a look at a separate, a second one that allows you to put a few more rules based in here. So we're gonna look at how to do an if statement right here and will allow us to actually build out some logic to see how it's going to handle it. So as we know right here, we have to, let's put in some logic that said, if this volume, right, this value right here is a zero, let's just say it's going to be a zero. And then anything else, it's going to be B7 divided by C7 and close the parentheses. And right away, the first one is two is going to be correct. This should be zero. And then also divide by blank will also be zero. So if allows you to actually be able to put in rules before the error occurs, and then you handle it to stop it from doing that. However, one limitation on if is that it's either this or it's that. It's not something in between, or you can't add a third, third condition. So perhaps maybe you did what you wanted to handle the divide by zero differently than the divide by blank. And that's where you're gonna to have to use the ifs, the IFS function. And then let's take a look at that as well. So right here, we're gonna have the same sort of um, idea we were looking at before. We're gonna divide four by two, four by zero, and four by blank. And let's say you had special logic you wanted to apply. And I made some very basic rules up here. And this is just something I made up for this example. Now let's say I thought that if the divisor is blank, then I always want the results to be zero. However, if the divisor is zero, I wanna just divide it by one. So in this case, I divide four by one. However, anything else, I wanna do another divide. So ifs will actually allow us to do that. So I've actually already, I've kind of highlighted the code here and how ifs work is you do a test one, and then you say if the conditions, if test one condition is met, do result one. Then you do like a test two of it, and if that happens, do three and so on. The one thing that ifs does not do is it doesn't have like an else statement. So you always have to finalize it at the end. So I've kind of already pre-written the formula down here. So I did ifs right here and I said C8, the divisor, if it's blank, and I just did the quotation marks, just, just put a zero because those are the rules that I set for this. 
However, if C8 is zero, then I want to run the basic number and divide it by one. Then you always have to kind of put a condition or a test that's kind of catches everything else that's left over. So in this case, I said, if the number is anything but zero, go ahead and do a B8 divided by C8, and then that will catch everything. So let's go ahead and apply that and see if this formula works for us. So first we'll do the test case of um, four divided by two. And we'll see right there that the results right here, two equals the expected. Now let's copy that down. This should be a four, and then this should be a zero. So you can see right here that between the if error, the if or the ifs, this allows you to handle any of the divide by zero errors. And then you could actually do whatever you want with the formula, depending on the complexity of your case. If you're still here and interested in other Excel videos, I'll place some other helpful videos in the upper corner. And I wish you the best of luck in your Excel journey.